good morning and welcome to the Alabama Aquarium at the Dolphin Island Sea Lab um, and, our, and to our Boardwalk Talks program. My name is Mendel Graber and um, today I'm going to talk to you about cephalopods including octopus and squid and some of their other relatives. So, um, October 8th is somebody designated, uh, so that would be October would be the eighth month, right? Yes? <laughs> right, right, it's a, it's a brain, brain teaser already. So, uh, it to be the eighth month. Um, until the the calendar was shifted so october is no longer the eighth but the oct in october still uh, is a reference to eight so um the octopus has how many arms eight. okay so somebody decided that october 8th would be a good day to celebrate octopus and so we are just a little ahead of the of the octopus date, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about octopus and their relatives. So cephalopods, I, I reference cephalopods. That's a group of mollusks. Does anybody know what a mollusk is? What? Well, a lot of mollusks are sea creatures. And a number of sea creatures are mollusks, but we need a little bit more to that definition. Is the word mollusk familiar to you? You ever heard the word mollusk? So mollusks are usually shelled animals. Most mollusks have shells and soft bodies. So the group, um, the phylum mollusca includes oysters, clams, mussels, scallops, and also octopus, squid, nautilus. So I think nautilus is, it kind of helps people make a connection between those shelled mollusks and the ones that don't have shells or at least don't have external shells. So um, do you guys know what a, a nautilus is? Have you ever seen a nautilus shell? Maybe? So the animal that lives in a nautilus shell has many tentacles and a soft body and they sort of resemble an octopus or a squid so that might kind of help you make the connection um, between the shelled mollusks and those um, those cephalopods that don't have shells so if you sliced a nautilus shell in half this is what it looks like it has these chambers inside it so this one has been sliced and then the two sides have been opened up and then there's a third slice where it just the little center section has been sliced so they're called chambered nautiluses because they have these chambers and they are connected through this um, channel and so they can flood those different chambers the animal occupies the outer part and they can flood those channels and what happens what do you think would happen um, if the animal floods those chambers with water what do you think <laughs> well if they if they take all the water out of the chambers if they squirt all the water out of the chambers they're lighter and more buoyant and they will go up in the water and if they fill the chambers with water they'll go down so, that have the shell on the outside. But then we've got octopus and squid um, that don't have external shells and also cuttlefish. So, have you guys ever heard of cuttlefish? Um, one thing that people might be familiar with that's associated with cuttlefish is a cuttle bone because you can buy cuttle bones at pet stores. Anybody ever um, bought a cuddle bone at a pet store? Yes? So what? For a 
bird did she want? Okay, so the cuddle bone, which is pictured here, is the internal shell of a cuttlefish. So cuttlefish and squid have internal shells rather than external shells. And when I um, pull the cover off of that squid, I will show you where that internal shell is on these animals. Um, but the, the, cuttlefish, the cuddle bone is removed from the cuttlefish and it's high in calcium. So it's used as a calcium supplement for some animals, you know, like birds, turtles that can chew on it. It has sort of like a, sort of like a light chalky texture. And so they can chew on it and get calcium. All right, so um, then the octopus lacks that internal shell. So I'm going to show you the octopus specimen here. So we keep live octopus inside our aquarium. Um, collected locally, um, usually by divers, our um, staff divers. Um, and octopus, the, the species of octopus that we have, octopus in general, do not live very long. And so they will come to our aquarium when I'm not very long. Their lifespan is maybe a year and a half. So they will come to our aquarium um, and, you know, live a, you know, a um, healthy life inside the aquarium. And then, you know, when they die of, of old age, um, and show people so you can get a closer look at the animals. So a couple of things to notice on the octopus. Remember how many arms we said they had? Eight. Eight arms. Do you see eight? And what do you notice along the length of these arms? Yeah, suction cups. So they have suction cups along the lengths of their arms and they are very, um, octopus are pretty strong. These arms are very muscular. You are welcome to feel them if you'd like. Um, and the suction cups are very sensitive. So they have a very sensitive sense of touch. I have even seen um, our octopus in the tank reaching up and touching the surf <laughs> so another thing to notice about the anatomy of this octopus is right in the middle of the ring of arms is their mouth and octopus have beak it's kind of like a bird's beak kind of like a parrot beak so right in the middle of the arms um, and it, it can be hard to see on these preserved specimens because um, the muscles will kind of get stiff. So I can't quite open that enough for you to see that beak in there. But I have a piece of the, the beak from that big squid, so I can show that to you. So, oh. But this is where the beak is, right in the middle of the ring of tentacles. Have yeah? Um, do some seeds in octopus is have little barbs on them? Um, yeah, the squids have little barbs in their, in their suction cups. Is that what you mean? On their tentacles. Yeah. So the squid have eight arms and they have an additional two tentacles. So they have ten appendages, eight of which are like arms that are the same length about. And then they've got two longer tentacles that don't have suction cups along the entire length. They have suction cups at the very ends and kind of like little pads, and those suction cups have little barbs in them. So the, what do you think the squid might use those for? Um, to hunt hay. Yeah, to like grab. Uh huh. And so, you know, the mouth is right there in the middle of that ring of arms, and so they can draw their prey to their mouth now octopus, squid don't, but octopus have a venomous bite. So um, when they draw their prey to their mouth and they have that beak that's kind of like a parrot beak, um, they can bite their prey. Um, and what do you think octopus eat? Wait, uh, 
They might eat shrimp. What else? Fish? They might eat fish. They could eat a, a, a whale like a flood or not. <laughs> a little whale? Um, die and they fall to the bottom of the ocean and a lot of different animals will scavenge on a whale carcass. That's called a whale fall. That's right. So um, to go back to your comments about an octopus eating an animal that we think of as, as maybe being too big for an octopus to eat. Um, we don't have the giant octopus here in our area, but there are giant Pacific octopus, and they have been known to eat sharks in an aquarium. So, you know, there have been cases where an octopus, or at least kill a shark, um, you know, because they were put together in a tank, you know, not, not without, you know, it, it wasn't obvious that there would be a problem between the, the animals. You have, you want to? They might. Um, so, octopus, another couple of really cool um, uh characteristics of octopus. They can squeeze into really, really small spaces. So they only have three hard parts to their body, that beak, and then they have a hard lens in each eye. And so they can squeeze through a hole that's just larger than their beak. They can squeeze their entire body through a hole that's just larger than their beak. So I would estimate that this octopus here could squeeze through a hole about the diameter of a pencil eraser. <laughs> um, and they also can change color and the texture of their body. Octopus are really excellent at camouflage. They have kind of a different lifestyle than squid. Squid spend a lot of their time swimming. And so their body form reflects that kind of different um, lifestyle. They have kind of a body form that, that um, is a little functionally different than an octopus. But the octopus spends most of its time crawling around on, on the bottom. They can swim. Um, and I'll show you this kind of hose-like structure on the, on the back side. This is called a siphon. And they will flood this part of their body, which is the mantle. So a lot of people think of this as the head of the octopus. But this is more like their body cavity. And when they crawl through the water, they'll carry this behind them. This is more their, what you might compare to a head, the eyes and the brain. Um, so this structure here, this hose-like structure on the back side, the siphon, is um, what they would use for jet propulsion. So they would allow the mantle cavity, you can see that it is kind of open, um, with water, and then they would clamp that down and squirt all that water through the siphon so that they can jet along. So they can swim. And squid, you know, use that same jet propulsion to swim. But octopus just spend less of their lives swimming. Squid spend more of their lives swimming. Um, where do they spray the ink? That's So the ink sac is up here in the mantle. And so when they ink, they will squirt the ink out of the siphon as well. Um, pretty intelligent. So their intelligence has been compared to that of a cat. They have been shown to solve puzzles and mazes. For example, um, if you put an octopus's food in a jar with a screw top lid, they can figure out how to open a jar with a screw top lid. They can learn from observation, so you can teach them. So if you demonstrate to them um, the twisting of the jar and show them the food in there, they will watch and observe and learn. So octopus are kind of challenging to keep in captivity because they are smart and they are escape artists. Um, and so you have to have a really secure system for keeping an oct octopus uh, captive. 
and you know they are very neat to observe and there is a lot of really interesting octopus video online so really cool thing about this day and age is that there's so many people um, out making videos of, of um, animals out in nature and then we have these platforms for sharing those videos so there's some really fascinating you know um, behaviors that we can observe that way of limited ink do you mean like if they ink would they run out and never have any more ink or so they have a small amount of ink in their ink sack you know their ink sack only holds so much and they might ink and then they can produce more so they can make more ink but it, when they do ink it's just going to be a limited amount for a while all right, so I said I'm going to show you the beak of this big squid. Now, this is preserved in formalin, so I don't want you to put your face close. I will tip it towards you, and you can look in without putting your nose particularly close to it. So it kind of looks like a bird's beak, that dark, that big, dark um, oh. structure you see in there. And that's one part of it, so it would have two parts that come together. So I'm about to show you that big squid that a lot of you caught sight of as I was wheeling it through the building. Um, and this is its beak. So I'll tell you a little bit about that squid and also about that particular specimen. Stand up so you can see it. So, um... So that's one part of it. So it's kind of like a bird beak. Mm -hmm. So this squid um, washed up on the beach over in Baldwin County, Alabama. So I and this one washed up on the beach and it was such an unusual um oops such an unusual um occurrence such an unusual sighting that it drew a lot of attention and um it was reported to the um alabama marine resources division um and so they were able to collect this specimen and they had it um, they had it preserved and they had it for a long time in a you know in storage um, and they offered it to people because it was um, you know such an unusual thing to find so this is called and, and actually when we first acquired this nobody around here knew what it was because they're so unusual so um, I you know found some help with a um, cephalopod expert at the Smithsonian actually um, and so we um, you know got an identification a positive identification with some help but this is a diamond squid. <clears throat> the scientific name is Thysanachuthis rhombus. And people call them diamond squids because of um, the shape of the fins. So, again, when they're kind of preserved, it can be hard to, you know, manipulate their muscles when their muscles get tight. But it gives the, these fins give the squid kind of a diamond shape, a distinctive diamond shape. And they get to be, you know, without including the um, tentacles, they get to be about three feet long. So it's a very large species of squid. Um, they are more commonly encountered in the waters around Japan. And there are places where people harvest them to eat. 
So I mentioned that I would like point out to you where the internal shell is positioned for a cuttlefish and a squid. So on those animals, this is also the mantle, kind of like the octopus's mantle. But I mentioned that they're, they're kind of shaped differently because of their different lifestyles. <laughs> think it's rubber? It's not rubber, it's just a, it's a preserved, it was once alive and it died and, and it was preserved. So um, this is the mantle, but it's shaped differently again um, as, a, as, a functional, as a functional adaptation for that swimming lifestyle. And adaptation for that swimming lifestyle. So the pin runs from this point right here of the mantle to the tip. Well, okay, I should explain. I, I just mentioned in a squid that internal shell is called a pin, where in the cuttlefish we call it a cuttle bone. It's not bone. Um, it's it's more like shell, but it's an internal shell. Yeah. Um, I wonder what it feels like. Okay, so the preserved in formalin and then we you know rinse the formalin off of them really well and then we store them in alcohol isopropyl alcohol so that they are safe for handling so the um, squid has been stored in formalin to make sure it doesn't you know decompose and this is water that it's in but you know it, it so it has been rinsed um, but it may not have been rinsed sufficiently for, I am handling it, but I will be very careful about, um, uh, you know, uh, washing my hands. You are welcome to hold the octopus. Would you like to hold the octopus? The squid feels a lot like the octopus. <clears throat> um, you know, the, right in the middle of the ring of um, <clears throat> arms the, uh, is where the beak is. The eyes... So you can see the eyes on this squid <coughs> are the size of ping pong balls. <coughs> so these squid have kind of, they do kind of a, an interesting vertical migration where they stay um, deeper during the day and then at night they'll rise to the near surface waters and they live in um, tropical and subtropical oceans. So it's not something that, that, you know, we really see here in our local area. This was uh, quite an exciting find for us. Um, do you guys have any questions about the big squid? Because I've got a few other specimens to show you. You said that they're normally around Japan. What, are they common in the Atlantic Ocean? Or is that... Well, so they have a worldwide distribution in tropical and subtropical waters. Um, but, you know, when I say that they're, that is a place where people target them for fishing. So that there are more, like, for one thing, you could think of it as like samples taken. So there are more of them being collected, harvested. Um, and, you know, people are more familiar with them there. <clears throat> but it's not necessarily true that the population there is higher. Gotcha. Um, so I'm not sure about that. No. How long do squids live? About How long do squids live? Um, you know, that's probably variable depending on the species. There are a lot of different kinds of squid. This squid is a really short-lived species. So it only lives for about a year. <laughs> well, yeah, the octopus that we, our local octopus, the octopus vulgaris, is typically about a year and a half. So, how long would the tentacles been on that? So, this one, this species does not have particularly long tentacles. So, a little bit longer than what you see for the arms here. Um, but it's not going to, like, extend the, you know, the length of the squid by another foot or so. Does what have one eye? Squid. No, they have two eyes. But don't giant squid see that they have one eye? No, they have giant squid. They have two eyes. You can't see that. <laughs> All right. So the other specimens I have to show you are. Um, so I mentioned that we have octopus here, um, and they 
most, not, not always, but most of our octopus here are collected by um, divers, by our, <laughs> by our divers on staff, because they can um, collect the octopus and bring it to the surface in a way that it does not cause trauma from the pre pressure change. Um, and so we will have those octopus in the tank. Um, sometimes if they're female, they will lay eggs in the tank. So occasionally we will have octopus with, with eggs in our tank. So kind of an interesting thing about the octopus um, life cycle is that once the females lay eggs, um, they will start to decline. They will protect the eggs, um, but they don't really eat after laying eggs and they just kind of decline once they've laid eggs and, and then they will die. Um, we have had octopus lay eggs in our tank. These are some octopus, they lay them in kind of strings. And these are octopus eggs that were collected from our tank. Um, we're not going to open this because they are preserved in formalin. And um, we don't want to shake it up because we don't want to break those little strings of eggs. Some of these little octopus had hatched and they're still kind of clinging to the eggs. So cute. So I've got here a... Hmm? Are they round or little eggs? So I have a picture to show you too. So... We've got the strings of eggs, and then these are some that have hatched. These are baby octopus in here. There are babies in here, and also babies in here. And here's a picture to kind of give you a, since um, it's hard to see these. Are the babies alive? No. Oh, that's bad. Did they die? Mm-hmm. How? Oh. Those are so small. Mm-hmm. I can see the... We're not allowed to touch that, right? Don't touch that. Oh, we're Can not allowed, right? Yeah, you're not allowed. Are we allowed to touch the squid? No. <laughs> Let me walk over here. Whoops. Yeah. Is there a difference between the female and the male and the Um, if the baby... Yeah, you can tell. Um... It's, yeah, I mean, you'd have to have a trained eye to tell. Um, so, you know how some animals, there's just, there's no obvious yeah. difference unless you, you know, examine the internal organs. Yeah. Um, so with octopus and squid, you can, but it's not super obvious. So you have to kind of know what you're looking yeah. for. Is the baby alive or dead? These are dead. They're preserved. So if you guys want to, you can actually pass these around and take a closer look at them. Just don't open them. And then, oh, let's see. I had the picture of the baby. Let me show that to everybody, too. So because they're so hard to see, because they're so small, here's one that's um, under magnification. Picture of one. So this is what a little larval octopus looks like. Um, I'm not sure if that's variable between octopus species. Um, and so, you know, between, so another, that's maybe more complex than, than you realize that question is. So, um, a female squid or octopus could receive a, a it's called a sperm packet from a male. And then they can hang on to that without laying eggs um, for a period of time, and I can't recall how long. Um, and then, you know, they will use the sperm packet that they had and then lay eggs. And I'm, I'm just kind of like, I can't remember specifically, but it's not, say, like nine months. It's more on the order of a month, six weeks. That's, I mean, I'm kind of guessing there, but I'm just giving you kind of like a year. What? The lifespan's only a year. Yeah. And they grow from that little one to that guy in a year. Yeah. So these are, well, these are not the, um, those are baby octopus. 
So those, that's uh, wherever that octopus is. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those. Uh huh. Birthing size of that so, squid would be what size when it was born? Well, approximately the same size. So, and also, just to give you an idea, um, you can't really age an octopus by its size either. So, um, like, they will grow at a variable rate depending on their food availability. So, um, you know, you can't necessarily find a bigger or smaller octopus, even of the same species, and say, well, this one must be older because it's bigger. Uh, so this is a different species of octopus that we have in our local area in the Gulf. This is a pygmy octopus. And this one is full grown at this size. Yeah. Collect them on the um, gas rigs out there because octopus are attracted to structure and those rigs provide, you know, hard structure and they can put a, um, you know, maybe a piece of PVC pipe or something that can be attached to it and the octopus is attracted to that as a, um, you know, as a shelter. Uh, like they make little dens and so they can go and check to see if an oc octopus has you know taken taken up residence or is hiding in one of those um, pipes and then they can collect them that way <laughs> thank you so these animals are you know really um, interesting they have a lot of really interesting adaptations and to kind of bring that back to the octopus these adaptations that they have they seem to have a lot of really uh like a like a like a varied arsenal of defenses right they can change color and the texture of their body they're smart they have a venomous bite um they've got ink they they just have like all these different defenses why do you think, can you kind of like just think of a reason these animals might have so many and so varied defenses? They're soft-bodied, and a lot of animals would like to eat them. There's a lot of muscle to them. There's, this, is a, this is a good meal, right? And they don't have hard shells to, you know, to make it hard to eat them. So they've got to have other things to make it hard to eat them. Uh, <clears throat> why, they, why they have it is because, it's because other animals like, like go fast on them and try to eat them. Yep. So octopus can swim pretty fast with that jet propulsion, but in short bursts. They can't maintain that, um, that, long fast swim um, and the squid have you guys ever um, ever eaten octopus or squid calamari My family has. yeah yes. octopus and or squid yes. both like um, you like octopus better yeah yeah well, this was, I realized that there was, I had something that I have not shown you yet. And this is a fossil. And the name of the, this animal is Orthoceros. And it is a, an extinct relative of a nautilus. Oh, it's a, it's a cephalopod. Oh, going back to the word cephalopod, the word, the roots of that word. Do you guys know what cephalo is? Like your cephalic region, if you had an encephalogram, or if you got encephalitis, what what does that word refer to? Anybody? Head. So head, and then pod, pod, peed. What is a what is a um, podiatrist? What is a pedestrian, a pedicure, a pedal? 
So that refers to feet. So the word cephalopod translates to head foot there's not much or head feet. Yeah, so, right, yeah. So that is a fossil cephalopod. It's an extinct species. Um, so you can kind of imagine um, an animal like an octopus or a squid that lived in the you know, outer chambers of that shell, kind of like the Nautilus shell, but a, you know, a straight one. Um, and they lived before the dinosaurs. What's the size difference between a modern day version? Of, well, there are no, none of those living kind of the, the straightened out. Um, but the, you know, a Nautilus might get to be about this size. Um, I'm not sure what the biggest Orthoceros. And there was a few. There were a few other, a um, couple of other species that we know of of the straight nautiloids. Is that found here in this area? No, those are those are found in Europe. a particularly long-lived octopus you mean do I have one you know like a specimen I could pull out or are you just asking if I know of any I mean there are, you know there are exceptions to that and we actually do not know how long our oct I mean we know how long they live with us um, but we don't uh, we don't usually know how old they are when they come to us so we don't know their um, like their total age that they live for their life here. Um, but you know, other people have done research on that and have kind of established the average lifespan. That can be kind of hard because, you know, depending on the animal, if you are trying to observe their lifestyle, I mean, their lifespan in the wild, it's, it's difficult, you know, to follow a single individual. Depends on the animal. Uh, and our ability to kind of track them throughout their lives um, and track a number of them so we can kind of have some confidence in that in that estimate of an average and then if we have them in captivity where we can observe them for their entire life um, we may be like depending on the animal if we when I say we I just mean humans um, if we're haven't gotten our techniques really down for keeping them healthy um, you know we may artificially shorten their lives or if we're good at keeping them alive they may live longer in captivity than they would you know in the wild so you know those estimates can be kind of hard to come to yeah do crustaceans and cephalopods do they believe they have a common ancestor due to like traits being similar between them or is it believed that they were always separated in some form of them? So, uh, <laughs> so those are questions of like cladistics yeah. and um, yes, they would have a common ancestor, but how far you would have to go back. Um, you know, they're in separate phyla. So just to, if, if you um, have some familiarity with tax, tax, taxonomy and so if you think about an animal like a jellyfish and an animal like a comb jelly, a tenophore, are you familiar with tenophores? So superficially they look very similar. You know, you would think that from their external characteristics um, they might be more closely related, but um, you know, taxonomists have them in different phyla. They are in different phyla, so they're not very closely related at all. So yes, but you know, you got to go back. Yeah. You know, I, I you know I can't tell you specifically what where the you know divergence was. So it's more just happen chance that they uh, they had so many traits that were similar. Right. Well, so what traits do you mean? Well, so hard shell, multiple limbs, those kind of things. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, when you've got 
similar characteristics that come up. Um, you know, you might think of that as convergent evolution, where they had spread apart and have gone in very different directions a long time ago. You could say like, you know, like a squid has a beak, a bird has a beak, but they're not very closely related. Um, so they've just had, they've, you know, evolved similar adaptations, you know, as a reflection of functionality rather than, you know, this, this uh, genetic <coughs> inheritance. Yeah, so thanks for coming and thanks for joining us.